called Ding Dong, Amy's Gone. This is the biggest news and such good news, actually. I'm so over the moon about this because for the longest time, I was thinking to myself, like, what is it going to take for this person to lose their job? Because at first I was quite worried. I was like, oh shit, this person's job is tied directly to the mayorship of London. And if the mayor keeps getting re-elected, then most likely this person will keep their job forever. It'd be like a job for life. But it looks like that's not the case. It looks like there is maybe uh, probably because of the lack of, you know, good work they done during the time, or maybe maybe because they just you know were tired and bored of the job. Who knows? But regardless, some of the greatest news ever I have to report on this particular pod. Amy Lammy has stepped down as London Knights are. Amy Lammy has stepped down as London Knights are. Honestly some of the best news i've heard in a long 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 freaking time i'm so happy she has been probably one of the worst night czars ever in history because it's the first one ever but she has done such a terrible job it's complete lackluster um i think if i'm not mistaken the night czar role in general was basically a what you probably more of an advisory role anyway there's probably not a lot of power in that role it was more symbolic but the idea behind it was that you know london nightlife contributes a hell of a lot of money to the overall uk gdb i think it's you know it's a high percentage i forgot the actual number but essentially what the idea behind it was to have somebody who could kind of represent london nightlife and kind of advocate for the nightlife industry which covers hospitality bars clubs all that likelihood underneath it well unfortunately for amy lammy during the time that she had a job obviously covid happened recession happened so she had a job in probably one of the worst times ever in the history of this country um it obviously affected everything but i think the overall inability of her to kind of be able to be the spokesperson or to be the shield or to kind of champion um clubs and to champion the need to have smaller clubs especially um was really really concerning because throughout the time that she's been london nights are if i'm not mistaken i'd say probably maybe over a thousand nightclubs have closed in london alone let alone the uk of course she's not she doesn't cover the uk but london and specifically about a thousand nightclubs have closed during the time that she's been london nights are i would say off the guess the top of my head but the most concerning thing about it has been this um abundance of local councils basically putting the clamp down on nightclubs and bars in general and requiring most places to have a late license case in point hackney um hackney for the longest time when i was growing up was like the place to be if you wanted to go to go out at night and there was loads of bars and clubs you could go to that would open past 12 12 a.m you could go a drink at blah 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 yes some of them won't open until six but there was plenty of places you could go to in dawson in hackney in fucking shoreditch that would be open past 12 nowadays that entire strip i think from like liverpool street all the way to stoke newington you probably would be able to find maybe less than five places from liverpool street all the way to stoke newington that are open past 12. most car bars clubs and bar have all fucking closed along the time and the worst thing to happen has been this influx of these late licenses so a lot of these local councils i've now decided to put most of the power in the hands of the residents who live in that borough and less of a there's less of a kind of compromise that's been had between like the residents and obviously some of the people that work in nightlife so now a lot of bars and clubs are having to fill out these late licenses forms in order to allow them to open after 12 but then a lot of these clubs aren't open after 12 most of these clubs or bars along you know in hackney borough specifically close before 12 so if you're a person trying to open a club or a bar it it doesn't make economic sense to open one because you're only allowed to run before 12 and if you want special dispensation you have to fill out a particular form and make the people aware and then planning da, 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 which kind of takes the spontaneity out of things so essentially it's decimated nightlife within hackney which is probably the plan i'd imagine i think the residents there probably had enough which i which i can get understand i think if you lived in hackney and you've kind of lived through the let's say the the early two the, the 2005s onwards you had it you had to, you had to put up with a lot you had to put up with smelling piss in your stairwell stairwell probably piss in your front lawn shit everywhere baggies you know rubbish like so many things right antisocial behavior you probably had to put up with a lot but i think as usual when it comes to places like london 
and nightlife in general there should always be a compromise there should always be like a middle ground it should never be weighted always on the side of the clubs and it should never be always weighted on the side of the bars of the sorry residents but nowadays it is and unfortunately amy lammy hill has become the beacon of this because she's been so how do you call it um i don't know she's just been so lacking in oomph in fight really i think the only thing that she could say that she's done um positively during her time as a night czar is maybe prevented fabric from closing but i think fabric is probably again i love fabric well as a, i love it as an institution or as a club but fabric probably deserves to close anyway right they've got themselves in trouble many a times I think people have died there in the last 18 months twice, right? Inside of there. The security is fucking annoying. The clubbing experience is fucking woeful. The bookings are really good. And the space is really sick, especially room two. But, you know, if, if Fabric closes and has to close, it's, it's its own fault. It's got no one else to blame. But she was around when it was kind of going through a troubled time and that she was kind of, you know, let's say responsible for keeping it open. But I don't think that's the case. But let's give that to her. Another win she could probably say is maybe the opening of print works, maybe at the time that she was around. That might be something that she would maybe claim as a win. But apart from that, it's been absolutely shocking. And I think the main thing that's really decimated the clubbing scene in London, obviously the local boroughs clamping down on opening hours of clubs and bars, but also it's been this complete lack of venues under let's say 750 capacity. Like there's not there's not many like folds in London and that's just really unforgivable. Fold as great as it is, I've always said it's an amazing club and definitely our best in London, but we should have one in each, you know, area of London, really. We should have at least one place that opens until six. And the fact that we don't, um, in that kind of style, in that capacity is really a shame. But we also lack it in clubs at five three hundred under. All these little small clubs and bars that I felt like helped to quell antisocial behavior because if you have a lot of 300 capacity to 500 capacity venues it helps to kind of spread out the load of people so not everybody's going to all of these super clubs or not everyone's going to kind of one or two clubs and at the moment it feels like everybody either goes to fold they go to venue mot maybe a couple of more and that's it so they're all getting piled into these same places you're all coming out all at the same time and then of course antisocial behavior kind of spills out onto the street so um yeah she's been absolutely terrible and um she definitely um, has been, I think, stealing a living for a long time. And it felt like she was going to keep the job forever and ever and ever. Um, I think that, I think lately a lot of the bad press she's been getting hasn't even been due to her job. I think it's been due to her earnings. I think recently she got given a raise, like, you know, making tons of money, hardly working. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. She's a fucking hustle. She's a fucking bad beach for being able to hassle haggle this role in the first place which she had no right to have in the first place she's not even that tied to the fucking nightlife scene i've never seen her about she allegedly had some popular party back in the day i ever went to but again who knows about it it was some fucking thing that happened in some shit bar in soho or something like it made no sense it really, we've got so many people in this in london who could advocate for the nightlife industry way better than she could um again the the, the role is a bit more you know it's more of an adv ad advisory kind of like image thing role i'm sure day to day but still she's been absolutely woeful so i'm happy to see her step down i'm not gonna lie let's read the article courtesy of the bbc it says amy lammy to quit as london nights are um it says amy lammy who will quit at the end of the month said that she felt it was the right time to move on adding that it had been a real privilege to serve londoners the role was created by Mayor Sadiq Khan following his election in 2016. He and Lamy, whose salary rose to 132,000 this year, and faced questions about her record in boost in nightlife. Honestly, we've had the record amount of clubs. At club, I think this year alone, 65 clubs have closed in London, and it's not even the end of the year yet. 65 in total, probably from the time being in the role until now, I'd say probably a thousand have closed, and she was making over 130 grand a year just working i think i think she, technically i thought someone on twitter say she might work like three days a week or something three or three days a week these government jobs are so cushy man three days a week 130 130k plus god almighty god bless her bro um the mayor's office credited her with having supported hundreds of venues since 2016 she supported herself in it she definitely supported herself mate she has not missed a meal never missed a meal she looks fucking hydrated she looks fed <laughs> she looks moisturized the hair looks shampooed you know she sleeps well <laughs> nice soft fucking mattress good pillows god almighty amy fucking lammy 
I think she's Canadian as well. That's the thing as well. This fucking thick American Canadian accent she's got. Like, she looks the way she looks. Like, I don't know, man. It's just... Ay, ay, ay. Um, questions have been raised about whether Lamy um, had necessary powers to make meaningful differences in London's nightlife, particularly given the licenses decision remain in the hands of borough councils. Yeah, this is honestly... Have they got an article about this, by the way? Let's see, because that license thing, man, is just... The way Hackney, because there was a point, I remember there was a time when Hackney Borough were more trying to steer that borough to be more of a restaurant borough than a bar and club borough. But I feel like even restaurants have kind of waned. I don't feel like there's even there's a lot of restaurants in Hackney as there used to be. It just feels like the residents have had enough. They want to, they would said no more, no more clubs, no more bars, no more fucking restaurants. Fuck you. Young people get fucked. And now Hackney is, is turning into Stoke Newton, basically. The whole of that Hackney Dawson, Hackney Central, that whole area. So, because Stoke Newton, they they just they killed all the clubs. The bars stay open until eleven. And that's it, and it's fucking done. But the borough, they've done a good job in terms of clamping. They've killed it, mate. They absolutely destroyed that borough with nightlife, which you know maybe it's beneficial if you live there. Just see this about the boroughs. Uh, London night is really struggling. Uh, strict licensing laws and problems with crime and eye watching costs are hitting uh, London nightlife. A public meeting this there this year. Um, uh, industry ex representative urged the mayor and a new government to give the sector more support it comes after city hall figures revealed that london suffered a net loss of about 40 pubs this year to march 2023 despite the pub employees growing mayor Sadiq khan said last week that there were challenges post-pandemic for all global cities but argue that london is ahead of the curve no we're not ahead of the crowd we're not we're not ahead of the crowd we're be we're below the crowd mate petty crime London has dedicated nights are da, 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 cross party issues assembly on Wednesday. Footfall has stagnated. Further concerns were heard on Tuesday, on Thursday when Emma Best, deputy the Conservative House, did her own roundtable. From a safe perspective, the huge deterrent is going to places like Soho. Petty crime is rife. I don't think the issue is crime in Soho. I think the issue is, is finding a place that's open after twelve. That's what I think it is. Um, tensions yeah they are coming they're, they're coming into central london they're looking for places to go and have a good time and spend their money soho's rolling up the pavements at 11 p.m if you're not a member of a club sorry tourists take your money and back to a hotel and go to bed that's become the new thing now people are now going to like private members club to go and hang out because those places are usually open around the clock or going to casinos which i think is depressing as fuck going into a club that's brightly lit and everyone's gambling and fucking you know miserable losing money you know having short spells where they might make money like it's just honestly nightlife in london if you're not into clubbing is really difficult really fucking difficult which might explain why people are just staying in um ask about the issues of the mayor's question time mr khan acknowledged that there are some challenges the good news is that we're ahead of the crowd no we're not ahead of the crowd ahead of the crowd ahead of the crowd when you can't get a pint after 12, 11 p.m fucking hell don't get me wrong i know my country i know my people maybe we shouldn't be having pints after 11 maybe someone could argue and say you know what maybe londoners don't shouldn't have pints after 11 <laughs> that that's a good argument but i don't know man he said that there had been a change of lifestyle habits since the pandemic which saw a last of um uk lockdown ended july 23rd 2021 mr khan acknowledged that the labor shortages were a major part of the sector in addition this is lobbying governments to make changes to the VAT system fair business schemes and more support for the policies but it's just for me it's a license man there's too much power being given to honestly i think the licensing yeah exactly licensing requirements it, that's the major killer that's killed hackney for me this more you know giving all the power to the residents and to the boroughs to control what clubs open and when they open and having no ability to compromise or to meet each other in the middle is really killing us but you know what do i know let's continue the mayor's office said that lamy had been instrumental in reopening fabric instrumental you know let's chill out at first at first they say she has no powers and then they say, look, uh, um, questions have been raised about Lamy had necessary powers to her meaningful difference in London. First, they're, they're questioning if she has the powers. And now they're saying she had the power to reopen fabric. Let's make your mind up, please. Securing the future of print work, securing the opening of Black Cap after 10 years of closure and enabling drum sheds to reopen. Imagine boasting about opening a club in a former IKEA factory and also boasting about print works, two of the most devoid of atmosphere and emotion no, two of the most devoid of like personality ambience and feeling spaces ever so so empty you pay 50 pounds to go into print works and all you get met with is a good place to go take instagram pictures fucking terrible club 
drum sheds terrible too not even clubs they're just spaces with like speakers inside and like lights and shit it's like cool productions i'm impressed that they keep it running the sound is fucking garbage the crowd that goes there is terrible the djs they book are horrendous like god almighty it's also pointed to a 50 half no, uh, 500,000 nighttime enterprises zone program a scheme aimed at boosting a nighttime economy it's set to town centers and launching a women's night safety charter which strives to support women's safety at the <laughs> what what is the, I don't, it's the first i've heard of these things the first i've heard of these things khan said i'd like to thank amy for everything that she's done in the capital as a first ever night czar she has worked hard to help london nightlife through huge challenges including the pandemic and cost of living crisis i know she continues to be key part of the industry going for no she won't forget fucked if if i walk past her in the underground station i'll tell her to get fucked fuck off amy lame wage thief you're stealing a living you're just stealing a living um he continues let me said it had been a huge honor for me to be london's and uk's first ever night czar the first and hopefully the last but the first and definitely one of the worst but after eight years i believe that it's time for me to move on oh thank you eight years of claiming a fucking salary and doing absolutely nothing thanks it's been real privilege to serve the londoners and deliver the mayor um i'm deeply proud of what i've been achieved it's unclear whether lammy will be replaced as a night czar probably not in it they probably won't replace her because you know um that role is probably useless in the you know in the actual doing of things and um, they probably don't want more scrutiny to be placed upon them but pro we probably need a proper one more than ever I've, i know they've got night czars in new york i think they've got the one one in amsterdam um but we need one here we need one badly man we need someone to advocate for the fucking nightlife industry and to at least push back a little bit with the licenses at least a tiny bit at least advocate for fucking venues 700 and 50 capacity under come on brother please for the love of god come on it can't just be like gentrification everywhere like let's have some let's have some fucking meeting in the middle i know gentrification can bolster the economy and the local community i know it has some benefits but let's not go all the way like every cool area in london now is doing that every cool area where people start throwing raves and having little studio spaces and shit immediately gets gentrified spaces that you used to club into get turned into fucking high-rise you know flats and apartments and co-working spaces and then immediately anything left over gets deaded it's over that like they try to like integrate it they just kill it it's just, which doesn't make no sense it's like why would you move to this area and then when all the clubs are closed you moved here because of the ambiance you moved here because you you know you had a good time at this particular club and you want to live near and you like the transport connections and then you move here and then you want to close them all what's that what the fuck like can we not meet each other in the middle can we maybe okay we're open until six can we maybe open until three is that okay nah just close completely fuck or, or what they do nowadays they don't mean they tell you to close they reduce your hours which then forces you to close because if you're a nightclub and then you can't open it past three like what's the point of being a nightclub you know what i mean you just might as well close it down so ugh. so yeah um r.i.p and good riddance of fucking amy lammy you did a fucking terrible job you stole a living and yeah you will not be missed you honestly will not be missed we we drink to the departure of amy lammy but all the pubs are shut <laughs> good riddance to amy lammy sadiq khan's useless night czar who did nothing to tackle reg reg uh, regulation strangling london's pubs bars and nightclubs the united states has been responsible for furnishing us with many of the most iconic sound bites of free market and small state advocates Milton Friedman's nothing is so permanent as a temporary government program and Ronald Reagan's contention that the most terrifying words in English language are I'm from the government I'm here to help both spring to mind unfortunately the United States has also given us one of the most useless bureaucrats in recent times at least relative to their gross pay in talking of course about Amy Lammy the mayor's London night czar who has announced that she is standing down from her post after a long but very well ruminated eight years it still makes me laugh that the first night we ever hired was some american woman like what <laughs> like who's plugged into like this like she's she was a part of what the like the soho nightlife scene it's like what the soho nightlife scene the queer so like huh like oh my god and what did she achieve well in a statement from the london the mayor's office said that she was the instrumental in reopening fabric and protecting the 100 club securing the future of print words securing the opening of black cup and 10 years of closure and they've been judged to open um how does that compare though with the three thousand and eleven pubs and bars and nightclubs that have closed across london since march 2020 okay so i was wrong i said most likely 
a thousand clubs have closed since she's been in the job. But this guy is saying since March 2020, since March 2020, 3,011 bars, pubs, and clubs have closed. God almighty. Reagan was right. We should want government to be less involved with our lives and our industries. Perhaps Amy Lammy took those words to heart, recognizing that less that she was involved, the better, although it wouldn't excuse the hundreds of thousands of pounds she took from the taxpayers. Um, but the precise problem with nightlife is the overwhelming extent of the government interference. And Amy Lammy, along with Mayor Sadiq Khan, had an influence needed to help the easy, enormous burdens placed upon businesses. The reasons behind London's stuttering nightlife, as identified by Adam Smith Institute, is the sky-high rates of alcohol duty and the absurdly restrictive planning and licensing laws that give local authorities and their NIMBY residents significant powers over things like opening times, noise restrictions and so on, as well as the powers to restrict new housing developments and driving up house prices and reducing the disposable income. Exactly. And those two things are so significant. That's why when you go to, that's why when I first went to Berlin, I was kind of wanking about it so much and talking about it ad nauseum on here and i'm sure boring a ton of my listeners because it was so crazy to go to a place where obviously all the clubs are open you know 24 hours if not like three days in a row and also the, the noise like the fucking sound was immaculate it was so fucking loud but it wasn't crazy loud we would fucking burn your ears off you could still hear people talking to you but you, you went to a club and you actually got great sound and you went to a bar and you also was able to stay there for like you know more than 10 hours which which weirdly enough even though that whole city is kind of you know run by you know fucking drugs and alcohol and shit it usually made you more sensible with how you would indulge yourself in those things weirdly enough because i think in london because of the restrictive hours of going out you tend to try to pack in more because you have less time but when you go to places like europe where they got like maybe a bit more lax especially places like berlin you you tend to kind of spread out your sort of drinking and drug taking throughout the night or throughout the weekend because you know you have quote unquote all the time in the world um so these restrictive hours in london yes they probably help to let residents sleep well at night but if anything it's probably made issues worse because you know the four hours that the clubs are open people are going super hard and doing way too much it continues now many of the solutions weren't the gift of amy lammy but did she or the mayor ever lobby ministers to reduce alcohol duty when hackney council reduced opening hours of businesses on westminster council withdrew pavement licenses for premises in soho following the pandemic did lammy and her office impose all the pressure that it could did she suggest to get the boss that he might accelerate his house building program a little honestly forget the maybe the reducing the hours of opening is hard in hackney council because it's probably way more residents than clubs and bars i get it but removing the pavement licenses for premises in soho makes no sense P part of the atmosphere and the hustle and bustle is having people around the pavement be able to drink and hang out like honestly like some of the back some of the easy wins we could have as a city which we don't have it makes no sense and when in july it became clear that england would reach the euros why did we end up with an embarrassing situation where the metropolitan police person on x please remember there are no outdoor screen show in the euro 2024 final in central london imagine that imagine that there was nowhere in central london outdoors where you could watch england against spain in the euro final and if we would have won it that would have been the best place to be right cheering on your team and in a you know in the fucking capital in the center with fellow people all around the world maybe some other French people too watching <sighs> perhaps i'm being unfair after all the pros uh, propensity of london councils to crush nightlife in their boroughs is real one of lane's um one of lammy sorry proclaimed successes was her keeping um to keep the nightclub fabric open the initial closure of the venue wasn't because it wasn't profitable it was consistently ranked as one of the most highest one of the best clubs in the world for many years instead it was because of Islington council revoked its license but that speaks to the crux of the issue it is the government that is a problem and the local government specifically if lammy wanted to turn london into a 24 city her task was to take on the town halls that make that an impossibility that she did not do Instead, she was focused on setting nighttime enterprises zones in Bromley that meant the series of events, including a silent disco and street food and sports and well-being interactive light displays, gimmicks, basically. You know what's really funny about the, the 24-hour city? We have we finally have 24-hour transport, basically, especially on the weekends. You can basically get a tube home from in most places in London, but there's nowhere to go. So we put we that infrastructure together. 
we probably hired more drivers more shifts are available more money spent bloody blah, blah 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 all the investment but there's no real need for it now because we're not a 24 hour city anymore these clubs and bars aren't open after 12 so everyone's kind of getting home before 12 and then the people that are, are staying out after 12 are just i don't know maybe working late or whatever or just hanging out in the street but there's nowhere to go clubs wise like not many places to go ahead of the last financial year amy lammy received a pay rise of 40 percent she was <laughs> honestly you kind of you have to salute her man you have to salute her that's real girl boss shit as much as i despise that woman you have to you have to, you have to give her props you have to give her props she got a pay rise of 40 percent in the last year god almighty it's almost 120 thousand what were the expectation placed on her well when i asked the great london authority of for her key performance indicators in that year the results were embarrassing she had just won in two 2023-2024 the number of businesses supported through the 24-hour economy program for anyone out in london over the coming weeks and months after 11 pm have a look around and see the evidence of that support you'll struggle to find it let's hope that the position of night is only the temporary one and at least then it will save taxpayers a bit of cash that they can spend at a local pub before it closes i agree with that one i fucking agree with that one so yeah r.i.p fucking amy lammy you will not be missed you were fucking terrible out of your job but you got a lot out of it so credit to you for fucking hustling and figuring out a way to kind of you know uh get a really cushy government job <laughs> you, know, you have to work too hard for us i have to salute you i can't hate that you know you can't hate the player hate the game sort of type of thing but fucking hell what an absolute useless person absolute useless person if ever i send someone a picture if i send you a picture of amy lammy know that i'm on useless time if i ever send you a dm an i message or whatever with amy lammy's face know that i'm on useless time just know that i'm on absolute useless time absolute absolute <laughs> useless time